fans, welcome back to Room 237. And this is not the review I said that I was gonna be doing, because in my last video I did uh, Taro Ishii's Shogun's Joy of Torture. And I had said that my next video was gonna be his film Inferno of Torture. But the thing is, I, I feel like I really butchered this review. Because uh, I didn't really have the aid that I normally have when I'm doing these videos. You know, to kind of scroll through and kind of help me out with info as I'm going. And I really, I'm very new to the director, this kind of genre, like this kind of extreme genre. I really didn't know what I was talking about. And I really feel like I failed this kind of review. So I just want to do my research more on everything surrounding this film the director the actor like really do better for this one so i'm gonna hold on off on that for now and instead i'm gonna do a film that uh recently i found out that i had not done yet i really i i could have swore i had and i've actually gone back and done more films like this recently i uh, there was a time where I was going through post-2003 modern remakes. This isn't really a remake. It's like a loose homage. But still, I hadn't done it. I, I had not done it. And, uh, you know, I, I've been doing these Amazon cannibal films lately. Or at least I've done a couple. So I figured, what the hell, why not just do this now? And it is Eli Roth's green inferno and this is his uh director's cut <laughs> this was announced a while ago and it was actually released to i think it was the toronto film festival in 2013 but it was put off for a couple of years it, it didn't even come out theatrically till 2015 and i actually saw this in theaters i anticipated this film because even though I've crapped on Eli Roth and his films in the videos I've done of his films, uh, there was a time where I really did like Eli Roth. There was a time where, you know, I would anticipate the next film he was doing because, like with Rob Zombie, I see a good horror film in there, and I always have that... Let's see if he'll get me this time. But also... I've always been a fan of Amazon cannibal films. I've always been a fan of Italian exploitation films. And I know Roth is as well. And this was kind of put out there as sort of a loose remake of Cannibal Holocaust, which I know is uh, Roth's favorite film of all time. Uh, it Of the Italian cannibal exploitation films you know cannibal holocaust is my favorite of that and it's not really a remake it's more of an homage to the genre but it does follow a plot somewhat similar to cannibal holocaust as well as jungle holocaust and just a number of films in the genre itself so i anticipated this for years and actually um like photos like this one had were put out back in 2013. I, I think trailers were even out then. It just kept being delayed, delayed, delayed. And I'm not sure why. And I do know I think Clown came out in 2014. That's not really one of his films. I think he was a director for hire on that one or, or producer. But still. And I know people have their thoughts on Eli Roth and this film. I actually enjoy this film. Like, I, I've seen it a few times. I saw it in theaters. I've seen it a couple times since. I just rewatched it. And I do still enjoy it because it... it it doesn't feel like the same attempt that he does when he makes just a regular horror movie. Like, okay, this is a horror movie that I'm putting out there. Hope it's good. Hope it stands the test of time. 
This feels more of just, hey, I love these kinds of films. Here's my love letter, my tribute to it. Uh, I hope people who like the same kinds of films enjoy it as well. So at the end of the day, just being an homage film, loose remake, kind of tribute film, I I would say he succeeds. I mean, there's still the same Eli Roth problems, not nearly as bad. I would kind of say this is like the Lords of Salem of Eli Roth's films, kind of like, you know, Actually, no, I shouldn't say that. It It is that in the sense that the whole frat boy, douche kind of annoyance that he has in his movies are more downplayed. The more deplorable characters are deplorable for different reasons. Similar to how the over-the-top edgelord <laughs> vulgarity written psycho billies that Rob Zombie uses were very downplayed in Lords of Salem. I guess that's my point. But, uh... Why is the clown... Uh, he was a producer of Clown. I keep thinking he directed that. I know someone's gonna correct me, even though I said it. Um... Yeah, so it was directed by Eli Roth. It was written by Roth and Glamo... M Emoto, if I pronounce that correctly. <laughs> Sorry if my nose is running. We we finally got a few days of rain, and then today it was kind of nice, so the pollen's coming back. It's really obnoxious. Stars it stars a uh, uh, Lorenza Izzo, who was one of the two female leads in Knock Knock, which I believe was his follow up film. I have reviewed that. She's much better in this, but this is the film where they actually met and they got married shortly after. I think they're divorced now. Uh, Ariel Levy, Daryl Sabara, who was... He was the bully in Rob Zombie's Halloween. He was the boy in Spy Kids. He's the stoner. Uh, the one guy, Kara. Ignacia Alamon, she was Ken Reeves' wife in uh, Knock Knock. The guy, Jonah... Where's his name? Jonah, Jonah. Aaron Burns, he was the wife's, I think, uh, manager in Knock Knock. But basically, okay, so this isn't a documentary crew like Cannibal Holocaust. Also, the title, Green Inferno, comes from the tentative title of the documentary the crew was making in Cannibal Holocaust. Opens the same. The opening credits is like the aerial view of just green, just the Amazon. So it's not a documentary crew. Instead, it's a group of activists, the uh, Save the Rainforest activists, led by this guy, Alejandro, played by Ariel Levi, Levy, who, okay, he was in Aftershock. WWE, really? He's a WWE wrestler? This guy is a depl... <laughs> uh, I'll get into him. But Lorenza Izzo is this college student. Her dad works for the UN. He was one of the two guys that were going to go be the torturers in Hostel 2. There was the guy with the glasses, then there was the other guy, the one that got ripped apart by dogs. That's her dad in this who works for the UN. She wants to be part of this activist group because Al uh, she finds Alejandro attractive and charismatic. This guy's not charismatic at all. Uh, I didn't really like his performance. And the, a lot of the performances, are none of them are really terrible or unwatchable. Some are better than others. But I would say I liked Lorenzo Izzo in this. I liked the guy that played Jonah. I didn't even mind the Spy Kids kid. The one other guy. The one who got the ants. Uh, what the hell was that character's name? Daniel. 
Nicola Martinez. I thought he was fine. Um, who was... I, I didn't even mind the, the Ignacia Alamon. Yeah, uh, everyone seemed to be fine. Oh, Kirby Bliss Blanton played Amy. Who... Was she the one in the roommate? Okay, she was in Scar, which I've seen. She wasn't in the roommate. Okay, there's someone else that looks just like her that was in the roommate. She also looks like the girl from Teeth. But, yeah, she plays like this vegan with crazy anxiety. But anyway, so their plan is to go into the Amazon. Well, first, Alejandro accepts her into the group because her father is, you know, works for the UN. And I don't know the character's name or the actress that plays Lorenza Izzo's roommate. That's a bad performance. She was, I get what she's going for. She's kind of like the goth or emo. I know they're two totally separate things, but I don't know which one they're going for in this. Like the whole, like, whatever. Yeah, like, why? Like, that's all she is. I mean, I like some of her lines. <laughs> like, the protest group outside, chanting. Like, they should all just be gassed for waking us up this early on a Sunday. Like, shouldn't they be weakened after starving and not eating? Like, just... Her performance is just terrible. She's, <laughs> she's a fucking wet carrot the whole movie. Just... Yeah, so dumb but their whole plan is to go into the Amazon and they're gonna chain themselves to trees and bulldozers of this company that's tearing down the uh, Amazon with these just plain face masks their phones that are streaming they've it's a whole elaborate plan where their satellites that they can be synced up to so they can stream um, of course, I'll get more into that when I get there. But, And ultimately, what really gives Lorenza and Izzo, Justine, the oomph to really just kind of see past Alejandro and really have a personal reason is because in her, I think it's an anthropology class, they go over uh, female genital mutilation that a lot of indigenous tribes and groups do from around the world. But, so, yeah, they get there. And you do have some... It still has Eli Roth humor. It does. You have... There's a scene where they... Because they're going by boats. There's, like, guys and girls. They're going by boat to the construction site. They have to stop to use the bathroom. And Spy Kids goes into the woods. He, he starts pissing. You can kind of see, like, a little bit of his dick. There's like a branch going across him. There's a tarantula crawling as he's pissing. And then we hear gunshots because they give him a gun for protection. He comes running back out of the woods, jumps on the boat. Tarantula almost bit my dick off. And, you know, he's the stoner. He's trying to buy weed. And they're, the whole plan of chaining, locking, filming works but what they do is they rig justine's lock so that it won't shut it won't lock so she's loose so this construction company that has a militia with them rips her from the tree points the gun at her and then alejandro you know yells this militia is gonna you know kill uh, an American woman whose father works for the United Nations. They're going to use guns, going to use violence. So they use her as a pawn, basically. And so she gets pissed about that, rightfully so. And, oh, there was something else I wanted to say while I was explaining that. But, and so then they're kind of arrested, but some strings are pulled that they get brought back to the airstrip to be taken back to America, where they all see how, how well they're streaming. 
and how big their victory was. And then that's when the plane goes down back into the rainforest and the green inferno starts. But one thing that I kind of, just because of how much the world has kind of changed since 2015, or at least more so, I'm kind of watching this. And Justine, before she's really accepted, she's having this conversation with Alejandro. And she's saying, well, how will they listen? How do we, you know, how does this work? What do we do? And Alejandro says the key is the fear of embarrassment. If, if we're filming them, they're pretty much going to look like jackasses. We have to shame them. We have to use fear to get them to do what we want. And I'm just like, I, I never get political on this channel. I try not to. I try not to let my political color show. But isn't that kind of right on the nose with what? You know, being progressive kind of is like <laughs> think and do, you know, think like we do, do what we do, or we're gonna use fear to take you down. Isn't that kind of yeah? I <laughs> I noticed it more on this watch than previously, but also you know it's the some of the dialogue is kind of cheesy because like before they you know they're all having dinner at this place just outside the rainforest before they go in to do their big deed and spy kids is like so we're just gonna go go out there where there's a militia should we have guns alejandro holds up his phone and he's like these are our guns and it's just like mm, kind of edge lordy and i mean he's not very alejandro dro is not very convincing the actor or the character. He seems like is more just like this edge lord that would wear a Che Guevara shirt just you know to shock people. You know. I I'm rebel hear me whine. That's kinda what I get. And this it's even worse at the end with like the new group, but so that's just some more of the political stuff that I noticed. Yeah, use fears, use use fear to spread peace. So is that that's the definition of progressive, isn't it? So uh, the plane goes down, like the engine blows. You get some cool shots of the inside of the plane spinning with the actors going around. <laughs> The back of the plane splits off. One girl gets ripped right out. Like, seat and all gets ripped out of the plane. Cool effect when they crash. I mean, the, the effects are done. It says K and B, but it's done by um, uh, Nick Tarot and Bergman. It's just N and B. Uh, no K. Is it Berg or Bergman? I always forget that. I don't know why. They're my favorite uh, team. But anyway. Yeah, also inspired by, you know, a mixture of Cannibal Holocaust and Ferox, of course. But, um... So, like, one of the pilots... They're going through the trees, and a branch comes through and just slant, like Final Destination 2 just demolishes his face. What well, I was going to say about K and B, all practical effects, some CGI, like there's CGI when some limbs are getting <clears throat> cut off and some blood spraying out on a surface, that's CGI. A guy that's nearly bitten to death by ants, the ants are CGI. But it's mostly practical, and they look good. I will say, you know, the effects are one of the highlights. <clears throat> you don't get a lot. You don't get as many deaths as you would think. I mean, you get some. Most of the deaths are actually from the plane crash. I mean, another one's off screen. You know, the tattooed lesbian girl. She's off screen. 
The girl Amy slits her own throat. There's some CGI in there. Also, there's a comedic bit with her when they're in the cage, which is definitely like an Eli Roth scene, also with Alejandro. But basically, oh, and then some of them are killed by the tribes people at, at the site of the crash. One guy walks into the propeller that's still going. <clears throat> Alejandro's girlfriend gets shot in the neck with an arrow, then in the head. Some of that's CGI. But then they get darted, put on boats, and then that's when, uh, you know, the, the image I showed before of the guy with the orange face and the bone, you know, we see him kind of turn around and look at Justine. And one thing I'll give Eli, Eli Roth credit for was similar to how the films back in the 70s were done, these are legit, authentic uh, indigenous tribes people. You know, he wanted it to be authentic. He didn't want it to appear like actors. Which the best way to do that is usually to get nobodies because then you lose the star power. But I mean, he he went right for, uh, you know, which, which was common. I mean, they did that back then too. They, they went to these tribes, cast them in a movie, I guess taught them how to act and how to, which uh, I want to get the name of the, tribe uh, of course it's not going to tell me it was a long name that I would never remember and of course it's not, it doesn't even say under production on here really hmm oh well <clears throat> so while they're there they're all put in a cage and, and then we get you know sort of the tribes queen i guess who also has an orange face she has this like sharp stone thing on her finger she kind of checks everyone out and then they take the guy jonah who i would say his death is the biggest one next to spy kids i mean we see his eyes get dug out you know she, she digs his eye out eats it digs the other one out eats it his tongue, and then just one by one, like his leg with like one of those sticks and sharpened stone tomahawks. That guy just hacks his limbs all off. Again, when some of the blood is spraying on the rock underneath him, that's CGI, but it's, it's practical otherwise, uh, otherwise, and I think it looks great. So then they put him in essentially this smoker like this mound of sand and dirt with the openings like a meat smoker and they eat him first and then the rest of the movie is pretty much just them in this cage trying to figure out how to survive uh how to escape you know eventually it does become like an escape film like jungle holocaust you know like uh the one guy throws his phone away because they have a guy with the darts right above him watching him. So he goes to investigate the ringtone, the one tattooed lesbian girl leaves. We see her get to a boat down by the water, but we don't see what happens to her. Spoilers, she doesn't make it. They're all given these bowls with something in it. So they're eating it, and yeah, you get another line. The girl Amy says, I'm vegan, eats it anyway. And then she sees at the bottom of the bowl, there's like a flap of skin with a tattoo on it and it's hers. And she looks around and all the kids have these little flaps of skin with tattoos and they're kind of putting them all over themselves. So she breaks the bowl, slashes her throat. And so then Spy Kids decides, and I don't think this would work, but for the sake of escapism, Okay, the humor is kind of all right. I, I think it could have done without the scene. Like if it was this humorous, it, it kind of took me out of it a little bit. But he he takes out his pot, which is, and they stuff it down in her throat into her stomach, so that when they come to collect her, they put her in the smoker. 
she becomes this giant edible. I'm sure the smoke going up in the air fucks them up too. Although I like the line by Alejandro. And it's like, do you think they haven't had weed before? <laughs> There's a one line Alejandro said that I actually like. I mean, this guy's just... But before they take her, they're all trying to collect themselves. They look over and Alejandro is just beaten off to her. And they're like, what the hell's wrong with you? And he's like, you know, when you're under stress, you got to have a good release. That, that way you think clearly. And they're just like, you know, dude, you're messed up. You're psychotic. This, he's like, violence is also a good release. <laughs> so this one guy goes to choke him out of anger. But when he does, we hear the sound effect that he's going faster. So I think that's a little bit of Eli Roth humor. Also to make this guy even more unlikable. Just like before they're given the food with the bowls, the girl, the vegan girl Amy, before she kills herself, she says how sick she feels. And I think it's from her anxiety. She just gets diarrhea. Like They make her go in the corner. She squats. And it's like this cartoony sounding diarrhea. And of course all the tribe's kids are laughing, going like this. It's like, the the dude bro frat boy douchiness is very toned down in this film compared to Eli Ross other films but you have sequences like that that kind of substitute it has the same effect but you know just it it brings it down just as much but in a different way and I just noticed here, a glorious throwback to the drive-in movies of my youth. Bloody, gripping, but you can't look away. Stephen King. A must-see for any horror fan. Anyone who sees it will be shocked. Bloody disgusting. I don't know because the people who are going to see this the most are fans of the Amazon cannibal exploitation film the Italian cannibal films, which are immensely more shocking than this. This one is gory. That's about it. And it's not even too gory or overly gory. It has its moments. But, I mean, sure, your general audience may be shocked, but you know, the ones who are going to see this because they appreciate what it is or what it's trying to do, I don't think they're going to be that shocked. And so eventually, um, while everyone's high, okay, they do get high off her. And even this dude, he's like looking at a bloody hand that's hanging and he starts like hitting it with this thing. They decide the uh, Justine, the guy with the beard and Spy Kids goes to escape. Uh, Alejandro darts. There was a dart in there. He darts spy kids. He's like, I can't have him kill me if I'm alone, so I gotta have him. Another reason to dislike him. They they do get away. They make it to the plane crash site. All the while, spy kids, he wakes up. Well, he wakes up, and there's these two tribes guys. They're looking at him. They're still high. So he's doing like this trick and he's doing, you know, he's doing this shit, laughing, trying to amuse him. Then they grab his hand, try biting him. And he's like, oh, fuck, they got the munchies. All right. So then he runs, but I mean, they just swarm him like here on the cover. And I mean, again, great effects. You get like skin stretching and snapping you get his intestines get ripped out they're all eating him one little girl grabs like from like the foot halfway up his shin she runs away with it uh earlier the lead tribeswoman with that sharp thing she checks down below on all the females back when they were all still alive and finds that justine is menstruating so she's the one chosen for the female genital mutilation ceremony so because 
when her and Chris make it back to the plane site, they see all the bodies are up on these poles. Not like Cannibal Holocaust. It's not through one hole out the next. But they are all mounted on these poles. They find the GPS in the plane, but they're darted, brought back. She's woken up on the table being made up for the ceremony. The guy, Chris, he's up on this post, tied up, having all of his bones smashed by the bone nose guy. Green shit smeared all over him. And then CGI ants come up and they start pretty much biting him almost to death. And then just as the mutilation is about to begin, there's gunshots off in the distance and all the tribesmen get their you know, bow and arrows and weapons and they run out into the woods. But one other thing that I didn't really, I don't think I picked up on it as much the last few times, but, uh, Uh, what was it? When uh, they're sitting in the cage, there's Alejandro, Justine, Spy Kids, Amy, the tattooed girl. Uh, Alejandro pretty much says, uh, you know, all we gotta do is wait a couple days. We didn't accomplish anything. We didn't stop the deconstruction of the Amazon. I was, I know a guy who's part of another company who wanted to get here first. So by stalling the, by doing what we did, my friend's company can now come in, pick up where it was left off, and they can continue. He says it was a PR stunt. So I don't even think he's really an activist. I think it was all just an elaborate plan to get all these people on his side for this cause just to help someone out. And, you know, he even says that, well, risks are risks. People died. And he says, we're lucky they ate Jonah first because he can eat them for a week. And that's really the first sign because that's sort of in the beginning when they get caught. That's like the first sign of him not being who we thought he was. So, when they all run off to the gunshots, there's this one boy who keeps going up to her in the cage. She has this necklace with a little flute that I think her mother gave her. And she keeps playing it for him. And eventually he does free her. He cuts her binds. He's able to knock out the woman that was painting her. She's got... It's not Yopo, I think. I think Yopo is what makes you trip. But this powder shit knocks you out. She's able to escape. And then, like, the little kid's little sister and I think dad start hunting them down. Eventually, he gets her far enough and she gives him the necklace. She makes it to pretty much the war with the uh, militia and the tribes people. Oh, but before she even gets that far... Um, Alejandro calls out to her as she's running away. And she just looks at him and is like, mm -mm, and just runs off and he has a fit because she's leaving him in the cage to rot. She does have Chris's phone because she tried to undo him, but of course all his bones are busted. He's got ant bites all over him. He says, take my phone out of my pocket. And then the little boy like blows the knockout shit in his face and slits his throat. So she has his cell phone and she still made up like a tribes, uh, a tribes woman, but she comes out, she's like, American, American camera, kind of, you know, kind of looking like she's pulling the same stunt, but then she just like, smashes the phone down as if to say just get me out of here I don't care what you do so she's brought away she's put in a helicopter and as it flies over we see Alejandro like literally up at the bars of the cage screaming but he's left there 
And then I didn't really pick up on this the first time I saw it in theaters, like, as to why she's doing this, but she's talking with her dad, the UN guy. Oh, also, what saves her from the girl and the guy that was sort of tracking her after her escape, there's a black jaguar that she has to walk by. And earlier it was established that the tribe believes them to possess evil spirits or be a omen so they leave her alone when she's able to walk past it. But anyway, so these people are asking her, uh, you know, was there any hostility from the tribe's people? And she pretty much says the hostility was from the excavators and the militia. The tribe's people took us in, fed us, took care of us. And then the second wave came and they slaughtered everyone, including my friends. I didn't really know why she was doing that at first. And then upon second watch, it was, you know, even though there was no cause to be there for, because Alejandro tricked everyone, she can still, you know, make it so everyone's death was not in vain. So if she makes the tribe look out to be peaceful and that they should be saved, everyone who was there, even by deception, you know, their deaths will still, you know, they'll still be served. They, it, it won't be in vain. And then you get this one dumb scene where... <laughs> She's walking through the hall of her college, and someone's like, hey, Justine. She turns around, and it's Alejandro. He's like, I made it. And she's like, oh, my God. But when she moves her hand away, she's got, like, big gums and sharp teeth and just bites him here, and CGI blood goes everywhere. It was a nightmare, I guess, to symbolize, you know, I let him die. You know, I, I pretty much killed him. So, like, PTSD dream. And now there's, like, a new wave of protesters outside that are, like, you know, hashtag free Alejandro. They're all wearing Alejandro shirts done in the style of Che Guevara. It's like, ugh. Again, mo but they seem more just, like, edgelord protesters. Like, look how offensive I am. Yeah, I know, as I wear a Cannibal Corp shirt. But... So yeah, he's even though he's a jackass and he's full of deception and lies and he's just a weasel, he now has a legacy of this revolutionary that has reached, you know, an international level. And so then, Fade to Black, we get the credits. And I've seen this a few times, but not really since... The credits has the character name, actor name, and then their Twitter name. It's like, oh, because streaming or because, you know, trending, I meant trending was a big part of this film. But then we get a, a, a mid credit scene where someone calls Justine, she answers it. It's Alejandro's sister. She's like, oh, I can't talk, but I'm sorry. She's like, I found a satellite photo, and it looks like my brother. I think we should talk. So then it kind of zooms in, clears up, zooms in, clears up. And we see an aerial view of someone standing there. Kind of looks like Alejandro. I mean, he's not really looking up. But, like, from here down, looks, you know, black. I and mean, it almost looks like someone's wearing a mask of his face. I don't know. Some places say Alejandro managed to take over the tribe. It was set up for a possible sequel, but nothing's been said since 2013. I just kind of disregard that scene. I don't really care to see what happens to Alejandro. Just, uh, I think this movie is fi just fine for what it is. I mean, it's, I can tell Eli Roth, is a fan of Cannibal Holocaust, Cannibal Ferox, Jungle Holocaust, the whole genre. And this is his love letter, his homage, his tribute. I get that. 
and I do feel that. I do, you know, I do feel like this is a genuine attempt to make, like, a modern, mainstream, theatrical release cannibal film. Is it perfect? No. Is it really meant to be a horror classic? I don't think so. I don't think it's meant to be, like, is this going to be the scariest of the year? Is this going to be what people are going to talk about for years? I don't think so. I... I think this is just supposed to be like a gift film. It's just like, are you a fan of the cannibal exploitation films of the 70s? Here's a new one. And I, you know, hopefully all the tropes and everything in that you have just as much entertainment or it makes you think of those films. Not in a way like, you know, this film sucks. I should be watching those. It, if any of this is making sense. Because <laughs> I've never really said this about a film before. That it feels more just like a... Like... It almost feels like a fan film. A fan of that genre got to make his own version of it. Even if this was a remake of Cannibal Holocaust... I, I don't think it would have been that bad. I mean... There are enough differences from Cannibal Holocaust to be its own film, which it still is. But I don't know. I I think when people say, one, if anyone says a movie is garbage, I I analyze it because I'm just like, okay, eh, garbage means zero percent on everything across the board. If there is one aspect someone likes, not garbage. It's internet, so people just say it hyperbolically. They always go to the top shelf with their fucking adjectives. Internet. I... I almost just consider this like a separate thing from Eli Roth's films. Because it is kind of like, oh, this is just my love letter to this over here. And, you know, I... The way I look at it is, if you're a fan of that genre, and you were entertained at all by this, it did its job. I don't think this was meant to be a really good movie or stand the test of time. I think it's just supposed to be liked enough by and entertained by fans of the Italian cannibal exploitation film. And in that regard, I think it did do its job. Fairly enough. I mean, even I, I, I don't really give grades, but I would say it's like a C. You know, effects, great. Even with the little CGI, there is, there is atmosphere to it. it. You do feel immersed in this Amazon. Obviously, the authentic tribes people, they really, you know, they feel authentic because they are. They do feel threatening. Um. The, for the performances were, I mean, the ones that were really bad weren't in the movie long, so I think that helps. Uh, the typical Eli Roth humor and douchebaggery was toned down, but there were other aspects of humor that were really just one-off things that went away pretty quickly. It wasn't something you had to deal with the whole film, except for how deplorable Alejandro was, but... You know, he's supposed to be unlikable. The music, I thought, worked. It's this very tribal drum score that I really liked. So, yeah. E even as a movie by itself, uh, I think it's just fine. It is one of Ross' better films. I will put it up there with Cabin Fever. Hostel's overrated as fuck, but I would put it up there with uh, Cabin Fever as one of his better films like that he directed. So even by itself, I, I think it's just fine. But ultimately, was it a decent, good Amazonian cannibal film? And with that, I can say yes. It's not the worst. Certainly not the best. And I know on the internet, it is, if it's not the best, then it's garbage. If it's not as good as Cannibal Holocaust, everything else is shit. You can't have almost as good. You can't have second or third best. You can't have decent. It's number one best. Rest or shit. Which is one reason why. <laughs> oh, fucking internet. 
internet people. It, <laughs> yeah. It did its job as an Amazonian cannibal film, exploitation film. And I, especially for like a mainstream film, I think it did just fine as well. A lot of times, the exploitation stays best in the exploitation films. I think it crossed over just fine. So no, it doesn't have to be a good movie. That sounds weird. <laughs> it just has to be a good cannibal film. Is it a good cannibal exploitation film? As a tribute to Holocaust, Ferox, Jungle Holocaust, etc. And yes, I think it is. It's fair. And would it be Eli Ross better films? I actually enjoyed it. I, I liked it when I saw it in theaters. I liked the director's cut. Has its flaws. Most movies do. But I've gone on for 45 minutes now. Holy fuck. So Cannibal... Uh, I will say Cannibal Holocaust. Green Inferno. I do enjoy it. Uh, thank you for watching.